watching out for you. For quite some time, Point 6 has been reporting on Oregon Governor Kate Brown letting hundreds of prison inmates out earlier through her constitutional power of clemency and commutation. Some of them even have a violent history, including murder. It's become a topic in the race to replace Brown as governor and how candidates would use their power. Our investigator Dan Tilkin has been leading the coverage on this. Dan, there's a killer on the governor's potential commutation list that's now been released from prison? James Anderson was released July 21st after spending 25 years behind bars. We want to warn you, uh, what you're about to hear, what he did, is very disturbing. He was 17 when he murdered Mariah Pelker Ingram. He's out on parole now, not on the governor's clemency power. But his case is an example of the turmoil the governor has caused, putting the families of victims through. And a reason why we want to know how the three candidates for governor to replace her will use the power of commutation and their plans for criminal justice reform. He and the co-defendant had dug a grave. This month marks 26 years since Ellen Pelker's 17-year-old daughter Mariah disappeared after leaving work at the Woodburn Safeway. We talked to Ellen during the month Mariah was missing in 1996. This is every, every parent's nightmare, seeing their child's face on a flyer. What happened to Mariah in this hazelnut grove was horrifying. And began stabbing her uh, over and over and over again. I think more than 20 times with a three inch knife. Uh, the co-defendant said she was lying on the ground moaning. She's talking about James Anderson, who Ellen says was the father of her unborn baby. She says Mariah survived the stabbing. There she was sitting up against a tree alive, pleading for help, thinking that someone maybe had come to to rescue her. Little did she know it was her murderers who came back and once he found her alive, he took his shovel out and bashed her skull in. Last October, Ellen went to a parole hearing to plead for the board to keep Anderson locked up. He was close to completing 25 years behind bars on his sentence of 25 to life. As she was there, she got troubling and confusing news. Governor Kate Brown had put Anderson's name on this list of 73 inmates convicted as juveniles of mostly violent crimes who Brown wanted the parole board to consider for early release. The parole board didn't know. They were a bit seemingly confused by what was going on from the governor's office. We were very confused, including my attorney. Whether the governor can transfer her commutation authority to the parole board resulted in a lawsuit that's being decided right now by the Oregon Court of Appeals. But Brown's action added a layer of uncertainty to Ellen's heartache. I never heard from the governor. She never reached out to me. In recent years, the governor and the democratically controlled Oregon legislature weakened Measure 11 sentencing laws for violent juvenile offenders in favor of rehabilitation and second chances, saying the minds of young offenders are not fully developed. We wanted to know how the three women running to replace Brown would direct policy. How will you exercise the clemency power? Oh, with humility and much more judiciously. This is out of control. Former Democrat and now unaffiliated candidate Betsy Johnson voted against the recent juvenile justice reforms. What has been the saddest for me is the accommodation that has been made for the perpetrators and no accommodation for the victims and their families. If you become governor, how will you use that authority? Rarely. Republican Christine Drazen was absent the day Measure 11 was weakened, but says she would have voted against it. If she becomes governor, she says she would not work to undo that law. Instead, looking to the future to increase law enforcement and compassion for victims. We have seen her use her authority of the governor's office as a way to address her broader political approach to criminal justice, which is that fewer people should be incarcerated. And so she's used the power of the executive to do sort of more blanket style commutations. And I believe that that has been an inappropriate use of that authority. 
We also want to talk to Democratic candidate Tina Kotek, who voted yes and was Speaker of the House when the criminal justice reform laws were passed in 2019. She declined an interview, but in a statement said, I would use the commutation clemency power with great care, making sure to involve all parties and review all aspects of such an important action on a case-by-case -case basis. In May, during our Coin6 Democratic debate for the primary, she talked about criminal justice reform. And mandatory sentencing, particularly for juveniles, has not really shown to improve uh, the situation for public safety. So there's been a lot of interest in making sure that we have appropriate sentencing, particularly for our young people who should be held accountable, but also reflect their developmental stage as a younger person. Who was your daughter like? Uh, well, she was lovely, for one thing. After months of painful uncertainty in Ellen Pelker's case, James Anderson was not released through the governor's power of commutation. It's the parole board that set him free. Despite the fact he changed his story, or as the parole board wrote, the continued unsatisfying nature of the recitation of facts surrounding his crimes, the board found Anderson does not suffer from a present severe emotional disturbance that constitutes a danger to the health or safety of the community. Leaving Ellen to live with her daughter's killer going free along a journey more painful than it should have been. The governor's office needs to be much more transparent about these kinds of things. So a few weeks ago, Ellen sent this letter to the governor asking her to postpone Anderson's release or actually overrule the parole board. But Brown's office and the parole board, board told her and me uh, the governor doesn't have the power to do that. The governor's spokesperson told me that Governor Brown understands that release decisions can be difficult for victims and survivors, but she did not address whether she would meet with Ellen, and Ellen says she's not heard from Governor Kate Brown. That is just absolutely heartbreaking when you hear about her situation, especially and the layers and layers of how difficult this whole process is and has been. And we keep hearing from the families of these victims yeah. that they feel left out of the but process. No one contacts them. Whether you agree with the clemency thing or not, if you're making that decision, for no one from that governor's office to reach out to the victim's family to say, this is what we're doing, that to just sit there and realize your daughter's killer is going to go free it is just kind of not forgivable. And we know that Governor Kate Brown has met with inmates. Right. To talk to them. So. Where's the balance? A lot of people, I think, are saying, Dan, thank, thank you. you.